On your development journey, one of the biggest and most challenging tasks that you're going to face is how to hack your own productivity. This is something that I personally struggle with still on a regular basis, and I have tried what seems like any number of things to try to become more efficient and to do something that isn't just a fad. I think that's one of the most challenging things is it's very easy to find different practices and try to kind of replicate some ideas but what I usually will end up doing is getting very excited about some kind of practice some technique or concept and I'll use it for a few weeks or maybe even a few months but then eventually it kind of falls by the wayside and I'm back to exactly where I was before that is where I started to look for something that wasn't so challenging and it wasn't something I was going to be really scared of. And some, instead, I wanted to find something that was practical and something that could truly be a lifestyle. If you think about it, and this relates directly to other parts of life, such as dieting. If you try to go on some kind of crazy fad diet, like you don't eat bread at all or something like that. You may be able to do that for a little while, a few weeks, a few months, maybe even a few years. However, usually you end up falling back into those old patterns and the exact same diet, nutrition, lifestyle you had before. So what the better way from a diet perspective to do is not to go with some kind of crazy diet, but instead try to simply simplify your diet and find a diet or a nutrition kind of approach that you can do literally on a day in day out basis and it's not too much of a strain and it's not a big struggle to do. In the same way when it comes to development, whether you're learning development or whether you're a seasoned developer and you simply want to get better use out of your time each day, it's not good to go with some approach that you can do only for a short period of time. Instead, you want to find, you want to find something that you can really have as a lifestyle. So in other words, you want to find techniques that you can practice not only today, but that you could be doing the exact same thing 20 years from now and still getting the same kind of efficiency gains as if you were doing it right now. And that is what I want to talk to you specifically about today when we're going to take a deep dive into how how to use the Pomodoro technique. So now that I've stepped off my soapbox on how to have a more efficient kind of lifestyle when it comes to development, what exactly is the Pomodoro technique? If you've never heard of it before, it may sound kind of weird. However, it's a very practical thing that you can do on a day in, day out basis. I know countless developers that I've worked with, that I've read about, that have been able to implement this on into their daily work and study regimens, and it's given some great results. So let's, instead of me giving a definition of what it is, let me actually talk about how I use it on a day in, day out basis right now. So the Pomodoro technique is based around being able to organize your time and organize your time each day into small manageable chunks. If this sounds familiar in terms of taking large complex items and turning it into more manageable chunks, it should because anytime I teach development, that is the exact same principle I teach. It's one of the biggest keys to being a great developer is by being able to simplify very large complex tasks into small pieces. So if it works for development, it makes sense that it would also work for our day in, day out lifestyle. So what I do each day is I have my full task list. I may have three items on the task list or I may have 12 items on my task list. And then I organize those by time frame. And sometimes I'll actually do this the night before. And so I'll organize which ones are important. I'll usually put the most challenging or the ones I'm least looking forward to at the very beginning of the day so I'm not worried and stressed about them the rest of the day. From there, I break them into how many Pomodoros it's going to take to complete the task. A Pomodoro, given the definition, is a 25 minute chunk of time. So in other words, if I'm building out some feature for a web application, on my to-do list I'll write whatever the name of the application is and the features I want to build out. 
I will also put a count, which is how many Pomodoros it's going to take. Or I don't always know how many it's gonna take, but I do know how many I'm gonna give it. So I'll usually do something like say three Pomodoros. And what that means is I'm dedicating three 25 minute chunks of time that day to that specific piece of work. And so what I do when I actually start the work is I start working and I have a little Pomodoro app on my phone that is fantastic. There's all kinds. If you simply search, whether you have Android or Apple, simply search Pomodoro in your app store and you will have 50,000 different choices. Maybe not 50,000, but at least 50 or so. You'll have all kinds of different choices of Pomodoro apps. They're pretty basic. You could probably even build your own. It simply gives you the ability to set a 25 minute timer and then a five minute timer after that. So what your process is or what my process is, is I'll work for those 25 minutes. After that time period, my little alarm goes off and then I have a five minute break. So with my five minute break, I could do anything I wanted. I know some developers that go in the corner and they do push-ups for five minutes. I personally love where I work and so I will go downstairs and I will walk around the building which usually totals about five minutes worth of time. I get some fresh air, get a little bit of exercise and it also allows me just to kind of uh, release some of any if I'm having any stressful thoughts. It lets me get away from the problem and if I'm doing great it gives me a little bit of a reward. So that's something that I find very helpful. This also directly comes into play when we're talking about creating a lifestyle of productivity. If I were to simply have all of my tasks, and I've done this before many times, if I have a ton of big projects and I list all of my tasks each day and I try to ram through all of them, I can do that for a little while. I can stress myself out, I can work 16 hour days with little to no breaks in between, get very little sleep, and I can do that for a few weeks or so. And then I crash. From that point, I go down, and it's usually a few days where I have no productivity whatsoever, and then I have to get myself motivated to work again. By taking this Pomodoro technique and mixing hard, intense, focused work, in with breaks at, uh, at some very regular intervals, like every 25 minutes, then I'm able to actually have more of a lifestyle approach to productivity. I don't stress myself out. I take small, manageable chunks of time and I work during that time and then I take a break during that five minute period of time and then I get right back to it. I love this because not only is this helpful, it allows me to kind of slot my time and my work each day, but in addition to this, it also lets me kind of gamify the work that I do each day. So every single day, and my app does this one, it counts up how many Pomodoros I performed on that day, and I can use it kind of like a game. So if yesterday I completed 12 Pomodoros, that means I had 12 25 minutes of time where I had focused work. I did nothing except the tasks that I was working through. And if I had 12 yesterday, then today I'm gonna to shoot for 13 because I'm gonna to try to beat myself in the previous day. So you can not only have a way of being able to focus your time, but you can also see relatively how well you're performing and how productive you are on a day-to-day -day basis. And what I usually do is at the end of the week, because I always take my Sundays off, I do zero work on Sundays. So Monday through Saturday, I look at my chart and I see all of the Pomodoros. This is a great way of being able to analyze how productive you're being. So instead of just guessing, because say that you didn't have some type of way of structuring your time and being able to monitor it and analyze it afterwards, you're really just guessing on which days you're the most productive and which days you need to work on. But with a, with a program like this, what you can do is you can chart your progress and you can see, okay, on Monday, I only got five Pomodoros. Why was that? Did I have too many outside meetings? Was I getting distracted a lot? What exactly was happening to cause me to be less productive on Monday compared with Tuesday? And if there's a problem, then I can address it and fix it instead of just kind of having a vague idea of how productive I'm being. 
So what are some other rules around Pomodoro? Talked about some of the things such as the time limits and the breaks, the counting and then analyzing, but what are you actually doing in those 25 minutes? If you go back in your reference, any of my lectures or my blog posts talking about deep work or having a really focused time of work, that is what you do in those 25 minutes. So if I'm working on a Rails project, then for those 25 minutes, I'm literally doing nothing else. I am not checking Instagram. I'm not checking Hacker News. I'm not looking through any other social media. I'm not talking with other people or having meetings. That is hardcore focused work. I'm doing nothing else. And in fact, the application I use on my phone for my Pomodoro counter doesn't even let me do anything else. It, when I click on start work, it starts the timer. If I even change out of the app, it actually blows up and it says that I did not get the Pomodoro and I have to start over from scratch. So that is something that is a motivating factor, especially if you're like me and you're a little bit on the competitive side. It really bothers me when I do something, I get distracted and then I lose whatever time I had already accumulated for that specific Pomodoro and I have to start over again. So that is a, kind of a practical way of looking at it is, when you're counting your Pomodoro, that is focused work. You're doing nothing besides the task at hand. It helps you be very focused and it prevents some kind of some of those distractions that seem to pop up, like jumping up on some application that probably isn't helping you be the most productive. So that is how you can do it on a very practical basis. I want to add one caveat before I end, and that is the 25 minutes is a kind of a guideline that is not a hard and fast rule. I will have many times where I want to extend that out. For example, if I'm right in the middle of typing out some kind of function and I'm on a roll, everything is working great. All I do is I click uh, OK on the Pomodoro timer and I start a new one and I don't take that five minute break and I go straight and I may go for an hour. There's times where I'll go for an hour and a half. It's uh, that five minute break is simply a recommendation. It is not a hard and fast rule. It's perfectly fine to go through a few Pomodoros all right in a row. Just like so many things, there are very few black and white hard and fast rules when it comes to these kinds of study practices. You need to find what works best for you, what works best for your workflow, and what works best for your own schedule.